Thank you guys so much for joining us tonight. My name is Mai. I am the Youth Program Specialist at SPNN. And tonight, welcome to our Black Creatives Artists Black Creatives Artists Panel in celebration of Black History Month. We have invited three really amazing local artists to come talk about their work and to have a conversation around artistry in the Twin Cities. And tonight, one of our youth program interns, Heaven, will be helping host. And I'm gonna pass it over to them to introduce themselves and a little bit about the work that they do. Um, you can tell us a little bit about yourselves and the work that you do. We can start off with Destiny. Let me unmute myself. Okay. Hi, uh, my name is Destiny, Destiny Roberts, and I'm a recording artist, um, musician. I rap, I produce, and um, I also am a filmmaker, photographer, and an owner of a clothing line. Um, yeah, is that, is that pretty much what I should say for the introduction? Uh, I go by she, her pronouns, and I'm just an artist out here getting it. <laughs> Yeah, so my name is Tarek. I go he, him pronouns. Um, I'm a director in Minneapolis, and I work alongside Jojo at the Minnesota Timberwolves as a videographer. And outside of that, I also own a production company where we produce short films and different things like that called Late Bloomer. So it's me. Hello, my name is Justin Jojo. Uh, Foriata is my last name. I'm also a filmmaker. I've been making films for the past, like, I don't know, eight years. Well, not eight years, but like, you know, I've been in the same like space of like trying to make videos. Started off interning with SPNN actually. Um, but yeah, I just uh, been, went to the U of M for cinema, media culture uh, with the bachelors. And then, yeah, just now I work for the Simple Rules with Tarek. Also worked at SPNN with James and Donovan uh, for a little bit. And then, um, yeah, I continue my media journey as I go on. Um, but yeah, good to meet all of you. Thank you so much. Um... On to our second question. What affirms and challenges do you work? Sorry. What affirms and challenges the work that you do individuals? Um, we can start off with Justin. So you said what affirms like what I do? Yeah, what affirms and challenges you in your work? I think uh, what affirms me is just seeing like, results from like the things that I've worked hard for, I guess like, cause like, I think when you're an artist, a lot of the times it's like very vulnerable to like kind of Put yourself out there but then when you get like positive reinforcement from like whether it's your friends or my my thing is like when i get it from complete strangers like that's when i'm like all right that's affirming because it's like one thing is like somebody else is getting touched by something that i don't even know so like that's the thing that you know helps me continue to keep going as an artist but like yeah i guess like just like not getting in my head about too many things i think a lot of the time i, I would get in my head about just like trying to create and then i dig dig myself in a hole of just like procrastinating but I think once I get past that point and then lean on the people that, you know, supported me and then continue to just stay within that space, I, th I think like, that's like a affirming for me. So, yeah. I think for me, um, it's affirming just to know that I'm contributing. Um, that's probably the biggest thing as far as my job is concerned is just knowing that the videos that I'm putting together are ones that are seen ones that people feel and enjoy and also get to put me in positions to meet different people like for instance last week we did a piece of content around the big brothers big sisters organization and we had a chance to bring in some children in order to have some fun with the players spend the day with them and just enjoy themselves and everything like that and i think when i get to be behind the camera in those situations it's just really fun so that's me um, I can kind of piggy off both, both of those guys. I resonate with what they said. Um, for me, what affirms me really is, um, I guess, really the reaction um, when I'm working on certain things or projects for clients and um, just getting their confirmation that like they love the work that I did for them or, um, or randomly getting a message from a, a fan like saying, I, I, I miss you, I love your music. And Sometimes those affirmations come in times when you feel so discouraged and you don't know if you're on the right path. And I feel like that's like a higher power for me, God coming in and like, it's okay, you're, you're doing the right thing. And he kind of, for me, speaks through other people and um, and reminds me of you know who I am. And um, I feel like that's really affirming for me is just that confirmation from people, uh, rather it's 
compliments for the work or like how it affected them or um, just on my journey, not really thinking about it. And then I get a random uh, compliment or someone reaching out saying, you inspire me or that, that kind of thing keeps me going and keeps me motivated all the time. That was great. Thank you so much. Um, on to our next question. Who's out right now that you really like or admire or even want to work with? Because I know there's so many new artists in the scene that are doing the things that you do and even more or less. I can go first. Um, as a musician, um, my favorite artist of this time and generation has been my favorite artist for the last three, four years is Smino. And he's really taking off right now. He's on a tour. And I'm actually sad to get to go see him in Toronto in a couple of weeks uh, at his show. So he's someone that really inspires me um, musically. And just, I love everything about him. He's just, he's just real different. And um, I, I really draw to him because he really stands out in his music. And I don't know, he's just something about him that's really special. And um, on the filmmaking side, someone I would love to work with is uh, on a bigger scale, Issa Rae. I've been a fan of her since she was on YouTube doing um, Awkward Black Girl. Like this, this was back when I was in high school and like she really inspired me then and she still continues to inspire me. So um, Issa Rae is definitely someone I would love to work with for sure. Yeah, I remember it. Oh, go ahead, Terry. I didn't mean to cut you off. All right, you good? I guess we should have like a little like, I don't know, circle thing or something, but. See, mine yeah. goes like this, so I'm just... Yeah, yeah, mine goes like, so whatever. Rock, paper, shit. <laughs> you can go first if you want. Yeah, you go ahead. I'm good. All right. Uh, well, who inspires me or what I've been inspired by lately, it really fluctuates. Obviously, there's, like, a lot of amazing artists in Minneapolis. Uh, I'm lucky to be friends with a lot of them. Like, Tarek's work is very inspiring because I feel like we have, like, a lot of similarities in as far as, like, aesthetic and whatever. So that's why it's really nice to, like, work with him. And see what he does and when he puts something out i'm like damn i want to put something out too like it's kind of like this like fun like like just like teamwork kind of vibe i feel with him so that's nice and then i've been watching a lot of like french movies lately really weird well, not weird but like really inspiring as far as just like the composition because i i don't know something about me is like i like the, the vintage style of like filmmaking so i feel like if i watch like the og like original like kind of like where it all started that's where i can kind of like get, get a lot of inspiration because it was so simple back then because they didn't really have like the like super tech and all that they just kind of had like you know they dealt with the shots that they had and like they, they dealt with the framing and just like i feel like when you have something like that to look at it's like the base is there so you can really make a lot of things out of like just having a good conversation or whatever so yeah for me it just depends like what i'm really into at the time but that's what i'm on right now and then yeah um i guess just people around me and just like experiences that i have really inspired me Yeah, I mean, I would always say JoJo. I mean, he's somebody I love working with all the time. But if I had to choose, um, I'm not sure if I have anybody specific that I could point to, but I love to work with some people from other countries as far as filmmaking goes. I think that a lot of times we have a certain way or approach to filmmaking here within the United States. And when I watch a lot of foreign films, they do things differently sometimes that I think are really interesting, whether it's the way they shoot it, the way they write it, or just how they compose their film in general. Um, I don't know anybody <laughs> as far as that goes specifically, but I would love to do that like at some point in my life, if that was something I was doing as like a bucket list thing and to be work with people from other countries, because I think that we could make something really special. That's amazing. I can't wait to check out some of those artists you guys named. Um, on to my next question, I'm really excited for your answers, actually. What are some of the best experiences you've had in your artistic journey? Um, we can start off with Justin. Yeah, uh, there's, been, there's been a lot, but, like, I think the best ones are when you can, like, leave where you're at. Like, you, like you go to a different state or, like, and you're with your friends. My There's another one with Tarek. Like, we weren't, like, the first time I actually <laughs> met Tarek was when we went to California. But I didn't know him at the time. I met him through a friend named Sawyer. And Sawyer is also another like amazing film filmmaker. Like he's like one of the best in the city, in my opinion. But like he hit us both up to do like a little documentary for this rapper named Keith Lawson. But like they ended up, we didn't really make like a huge video out of it. But the thing that I loved the most was just like being there and like experiencing like all like the funny antics and just like being in a new city and just like seeing all these new visuals. We ended up just like creating stuff on our own. But like I think the thing that I like about uh me getting into the creative scene is just like being able to 
get experiences like that just like getting put into a different state or like travel for it it was like the most like crazy thing and another thing I got to do was go to Arizona for a shoot and like I've never been to Arizona so it's just like things like that just like seeing different um cities and meeting new people and then when you're in those places you get so much inspiration from them because it's like you're not you know there all the time so you want to like take advantage but like the people there are probably like oh this is just regular but I just look at like a building and be like wow like that, that building looks crazy like let's shoot something there or something like that. so yeah I think it's like that type of stuff that really gets me going and forgive me if I forget the question as I talk, because I, I feel like I go on riffs and then I'm like, I forgot. No, it's perfectly fine. It's okay. Yeah, hit on the question. Um, Destiny, if you would like to go. What was the question again? Um, the question was, what are some of the best experiences you had um, in artistic journey? Oh, man. I think the best thing about the um, realms of art I'm in is like, experiences come all the time naturally with it and I'd say for my music one of the best experiences I had I had a mini tour on the west coast so I had shows like in California and Portland and Oregon and um that was probably one of the most fun just experiences I had with my music personally um I'd say also too it was just a good time like I got my first placement for one of my songs on Netflix and then I went on tour like a few months later. So it was just like amazing time. And and just knowing like with music, like anything can kind of happen overnight. And like those experiences can become more often. So that's something I really look forward to, um, stuff like that. And I'd say with filmmaking, um, some of the best experiences I've had have been experiences that I never thought I would be in. Like just, you know, like clients coming to me like, hey, can you shoot this or come to this event and do that? I'm like, sure. So the last thing that I actually shot that was a bigger project is a, a documentary I'm working on for a professional boxer here. And so with that, I actually got to go to my first professional boxing match. And it was just the coolest experience. I never thought like through film, I would be, you know, doing something like that. And that actually made me realize how much I really do love shooting like sports and stuff like that. So that actually opened up another kind of can of worms for me to tap into. And um, I know we for, I, I forgot the screen share, but at the end, if we can screen share, I definitely would love to show you guys some of the piece of the documentary I'm working on. But mm -hmm. um, experiences have been definitely um, a blessing to have and experience through just music and film alone. Um, but yeah, I say the best, my, so far my favorite experience has been like going on that mini tour and just creating new like experiences and new fans out the state and it was a really it was really dope so I hope to do that more often as well. That was great. Thank you for your answers. Actually to cut into some of the questions and a little off track, but one of um I can't exactly remember, but when you guys said you guys worked at SBNN as an intern, can you guys tell me a little bit about that? Because I myself am an intern as well. So I could definitely learn a thing or two, but yeah. If any, um, Destiny, you wanted to go or Justin? Yeah, I can go. I, I, I guess I was considered an intern. I always considered myself a youth participant, but I never was like, oh yeah, that is an intern pretty much. But um, I, I don't know if they still have the YIP program, um, youth, I can't remember what it stands for, but I interned for that. And um, through that experience, I got to kind of showcase my leadership with other youth. And I was really a kind of a key point of just help all around with their projects and ideals and, you know, helping organize things. Um, and it was just an opportunity, opportunity for me to really step up and show my leadership. And I really took advantage of that because I really enjoyed it. And um, through that experience, I realized like, I can't be a leader. Like I am a leader and and I'm I could be good at this. So I'd say like any advice for you, just don't be afraid to step into the role because you know they look up to you and you know like that's everything. And especially being a black woman and representation is everything. So to see you in that role and to look look up at you, like that's that's such a good place to be. And just remember like just step in, don't be afraid to step into that role because people are dependent on you for that. 
Thank you so much. Yeah, and uh, I'll say uh, when I interned, um, it was a couple of years ago, but I'll try to remember like, a lot of it. But I think the best thing I took from it, I did like this program called Making Media Making Change at the beginning. And then that's what really got me into like storytelling and filmmaking, just being around a bunch of young people like my age and, you know, not really having experience. But it was a great way to like collaborate with people. And it built like that, like consistency that I was craving in creativity, but it kind of gave it that uh, that overshadow of like, a, like people were, were there to help me. I was there to bounce ideas off of it. I think a lot of the times when you're starting to be like an artist or come up as an artist, um, it's alienating because you don't have uh, other people to lean on. But I think that SPN really provided the space and like opportunity to like have a moment to where if you are a young filmmaker, you have resources like cameras and leaders to like guide you through it. And I think it was a great experience for me to like get into that space and like learn from others and like continue to grow. Um, and yeah, like just being a part of like the the whole like, you know, I got to learn about the gear too. Cause like, I remember I worked at like the little desk, you know, when you check out the cameras, I was a little nervous to do that because I was like, I don't know the tech too well, but I think like just mm -hmm. going through like the motions of like, you know, making sure you know your stuff over and over again, it, it really built that like confidence to like guide somebody in the right spot or like what they need from you because you've done it so many times. So like, I think if you want to get into like videography, SPN is a great place to just be familiar with because they just have a lot of great opportunities for people all the time. So, yes. yeah. Um, on to our next question. What are some difficulties you face as an artist? I know there's a bunch of different difficulties in, especially in the filmmaking music era. Um, so can you explain a little bit about that? Anyone can take this question. I guess I'll take it. <laughs> um, the difficulties, let me think about that. I'd say there's a lot of different things that could be really difficult throughout the whole um, process of filmmaking and everything like that. But I think one of the biggest things for me to try and overcome was figuring out how to work more with the team consistently. I think a lot of times when you first start doing videography, it's really easy to pick up a camera record maybe a few of your friends and put something cool together. But once you start, you want to start like scaling and making some bigger, more high quality stuff, you realize that, hey, I can't do everything at the same time. You know, like I can't be here and also be there. And I can't make sure that this is exactly how I want it to be and also be in a different place and doing the same thing too. So I think it took a long time for me to kind of drop a little bit of my ego and be willing to distribute some of the work and be like, all right, I trust you in order to take this portion of the job and then I'll do my part. And hopefully we can meet somewhere in the middle and make some really cool stuff. But I'd say like out of all the challenges over the past couple of years, that's probably like my biggest uh, one. Um, I'm gonna take that. Um, man, I, I totally can relate to that. <laughs> I'm in the process of letting my ego go with that because this documentary I just did, I did everything by myself. And I was like, okay, that was just wild. <laughs> I should definitely should have had a team with me for this. Um, but I can speak on um, being a musician and an artist. Um, I'd say some of my biggest struggles have really been uh, more than anything like financially and like finding those resources. Um, it takes money to make money. It costs a lot of money when you have your own business. And like, you know, I don't, I, I don't come from a very privileged lineage of money. Just, so everything I've done has been done from scratch and hard work and just hustling. And um, I'd say the biggest challenge definitely is probably just been financially and finding those resources that can support with that. Um, and also, um, I know a lot of being like a woman a uh, rapper or a uh, woman artist, uh, I'd say representation as well. Um, back when I was performing a lot, I, I should mention that I'm a mother. I, I have a one-year-old daughter, so I have taken a little hiatus on my music, but I'm getting back into it now. Um, but when I was performing, um, I was always probably more than likely the only like woman on the bill, and it'd be like me and a bunch of guys. And it was always like that. And I felt like there wasn't enough space 
you know, for women to really be represented in a way that we should, because honestly, like a lot of the women on the scene are way better than the men bars wise. But um, I feel like that was something that could be worked on as a community, um, something that I, I realized was was different. Like, oh, wow, like I really am just, I am the only one on, on the bill right now. And I'm representing, I'm holding it down for all of us, you know, kind of thing. Um, and also just resource of knowledge, because a lot of people are great with their gift, but they're not great behind the business aspect of it. And I feel like that holds a lot of people back um, because they don't have that business mindset because one, they probably don't know what that is or what that means. And I feel like that's a, a missing piece in a lot of people's, um, just their workflow of just figuring out is they got the art down, they got the craft down, but they don't have that business mindset. And I feel like that is something that a lot of people can use help with. Um, I would love to, um, and I actually plan on doing courses and stuff soon once I figure out things a little bit more, but I feel like that's definitely a, a, a lane that people could uh, be helped out with is just the business side of things with their craft because, man, it can get very real very fast. <laughs> yeah, I, both of what Destiny and Tarek said, is, like, I agree with a lot of it um, because I think of the main challenge for me uh, is, like, also just protecting, like, the energy that I have as a creator because I feel like when you do create people want to kind of use the resources of your mind and I think a lot of the time the reason I started creating is because I did it because it was passion like for me like for fun and like some of the best things I've created have been out of just like straight up passion so then when people ask you to do something and they want like, the exact outcome of what you just made it's hard to just kind of like you know especially if it's not something you're inspired by to like bring that out of you again so I think that's a huge challenge for me that I'm trying to been work through like the four over the past couple of years, just like kind of like swallowing my ego in a sense of like, sometimes I just need to do this because I need money. But fortunately now I have a job that pays like, you know, um, money, like, so I don't have to like rely on my freelancer, and my creative work to, so now I can mainly lean into it as a passion thing. So I've been pretty like selective of who I choose to work with in a sense of like, is this going to be fun? Is this going to be a great experience for me? And just like being able to like set boundaries within myself and, that was a really hard thing for me to do back in the day because, you know, when you first start out, you want to take every opportunity because you're like, all right, this is cool. Like people are actually starting to like realize I'm good at this. So I can't say no. And then you end up doing that all the work and then, you know, you don't really get paid very well. And then you start to kind of burn out and then you don't even want to make stuff for yourself. So then that's kind of dangerous because you only got, you got into it and you got good at it because you loved it and you don't want that joy to be taken from you because you don't know how to say no, or you don't know how to like, you know, put your foot down and be like, no, nah, I can't do that for you. Or just like, you know, work, work through those things. And then, yeah, a lot of it too, is just like financially, I think like as a filmmaker, it's like the most expensive hobby. Like I swear, like, especially if you want to like make the things that, you know, you kind of want to emulate, you know, the movies, right. You want to see like feature films, like you got to look up what lens it is and like what kind of image quality you want. And you look up the camera and it's like, the lens itself is like $700 or that's even on the cheap side. And the body for the camera is like, you know, another like thousand dollars. So I guess it's like, you shouldn't let the gear get in the way, but you should also just keep in mind, like, as you grow, you want to be able to build like your set and like, you know, you have resources for yourself and just like even getting like studio lights and just like all that is a huge thing. So I think a lot of it is just like having connections and building your resources is that that's one thing uh, as a filmmaker that I've learned to try to hold on to and just like make sure I can lean on my my friends in the community but yeah do it as you grow don't just start building without anything yeah um how do you guys measure or yeah measure growth in your work and to add on to that question how has your grown how have you grown as an artist I gave you guys time to think Um, I would say like when I first started out, I was just filming things that I thought looked cool and putting it with music that I thought sounded cool and trying to find a cool marriage between the two of those things. But I think over time, the way that my art has really grown is just putting a lot more intention behind what it is that I'm doing and how it is that I'm doing it since now I actually have a good idea 
of how to do it. I think when you're first starting out, it's very much like, you know, I'm going to try this. I'm going to try that. I'm going to see how it feels. I'm going to see how it comes out. But over the course of time, and I'm sure it's probably the same with music like um, Destiny does, um, you kind of figure out whether it's what your sound is, what your style is on camera or however. And it's just is really cool. I think the more that you learn, the more you apply yourself and the more you work with other people, you start to just figure out like, oh, OK, this is my lane. This is how I typically do stuff. And I enjoy that. So, yeah. Thank you. Um, if Justin yeah. Destiny, want to take the question? Yeah, um, I think how I've grown is like, I think like, you know, when you start out, you have an idea of what you want to do. Like, I remember my first video was like a recap of like my cousin DJ. And I thought that was like the coolest video ever. Like, I was, but looking back, obviously it's like, wow, like you literally just, you know, cut to the beat. Like, but it was just a simple, you know, like I wanted to just be a part of like the music scene. I remember like, just like not having like, any like niche but all like my friends were making music and stuff. So I was like, all right, let me be the dude who, who has a camera so I could just be a part of it. So then I started just like making these little recap videos or like short videos. And then that elevated to like music videos. But now I'm starting to feel like music videos are boring to me. So now I'm like, I want to make narrative stuff, you know? So that's how I'm growing is like, I want to keep on getting to the point of like shooting, you know, things that are make, going to make me think more or just like, because it's like, if you shoot the same stuff, it kind of gets repetitive over a uh, course of time, so. I guess just being around others that, you know, I can see are doing different kinds of work and I want to just continue to grow in that way. And like, yeah, it's like a slow process, but I mean, I feel like just like, as you do it, it's just natural. Like it's just going to happen, like no matter what, like you feel like you're not just going to make the same stuff forever, you know? So, yeah. Yes. Um, piggyback, piggybacking off of what Tarek said about intention, like that's it honestly like intention and for me experiences is, is what helps me kind of grow and sometimes as an artist like you can be in a zone for so long like I was in a zone from like 2016 to 2019 like I was out here crazy 2019 I dropped 70 P's and like I was going nuts I dropped visuals I made my own visuals and like I was going crazy and then like COVID happened and then I ended up getting pregnant and I had my first kid and like my life at 2019 to right now, like I am a whole different person and I am currently going through a transition of like a change, like a kind of metamorphosis kind of thing. And like, I, I feel it like it's, it's different. And I know like when I approach my music, I'm in a space where I'm almost there is going to be so different than the space I was in in 2019 because so much life has happened for me in those, you know, three years. And like naturally, like when I get back into it, it's going to be something different. And it's just been so much growth through those experiences. And um, and sometimes as an artist, you got to let life happen. And you might, you might be stuck because you're kind of going through the same experiences. But once like, some shakes, some changes, you go through something, you grow through something, and then it's like, okay, I'm not even in that same headspace anymore. Now, like, I have a whole different perspective, or I'm a mom now. Like, what does that mean? Like, I gotta, even being a mom has like motivated me and inspired me to the top tier level of inspiration. Cause it's like, now I have something to, lose now I have something to like work hard like work my tail off or I have a legacy to build because there's someone like literally looking up to me every day so it's like a, it's naturally a different ball game like when you have different life experiences and like I mentioned before like as an artist sometimes you just gotta like just chill and just let life happen and then come with a new approach and share your new perspective share you know what you learn through through that growth in that process um, <clears throat> but yeah, I definitely feel like I am literally in a phase where I am getting ready to like, I'm getting ready to get back into that motion, but it's just going to be a different level of it, you know, so. Thank you. COVID definitely um, changed a lot of things for us. I'm glad that you guys didn't let that stop you and your craft and what you're doing. So congratulations to all of you guys. Um, 
next question is how does an idea creative environment look um look for you and how can the local creative community myself included can get that type of space because i know it's very hard especially right now in the twin cities so thank you can you say ask that one more time how does the ideal creative environment look for you and how can the local creative community get that type of space uh, i can go uh, mm -hmm. i think the ideal well this is like a specific preferences that you're asking i guess like who like what i would think is the ideal creative space yeah yep. uh i think the ideal creative space is just like making sure that you know everybody around you is respected and you know everybody's ideas are getting you know listened to and you're able to create in a way that doesn't um limit anyone's idea and making sure that you guys can all bounce things off each other and you know just bring everybody's perspective because everybody's going to have a unique perspective no matter who they are like and everyone has their own experiences but i think for me it's really simple as long as like people are looking at it in a fun way because I think a lot of times I've been on sets of what people's energy is just like not really you know the most welcoming and I think like especially if you want something to be good it's going to reflect in the work so I think it all comes down to like the people around you and like how you treat other people you know making sure that you you know humanize others instead of trying to think of them as like something you could use or some somebody you can use to get somewhere I think the most important thing is just making sure like you guys can kind of build that working relationship but like hopefully friendship first like because a lot of the times like i think you can make the best things with people is when you guys have an organic relationship where you guys can just like you know hang out and also make stuff so that's ideal for me but obviously you can't be homies with everybody but if i could i would like if i'm working with somebody i'd want i want to be their friend you know like it's i think that just helps the creative process um and then as far as community uh, I'm actually in like a collective called Banana Leaf. That's actually how I found out about this because um, we're all just young BIPOC people trying to help each other out with like opportunities as far as like, you know, if there's like stuff like this, we send a link through. Uh, we have a studio in the Northeast uh, right now that we can all just come and like kind of find a space to like create and bounce ideas off each other. Uh, we're currently working on a documentary about like Northeast artists. And so, yeah, I think like just making sure like, you know, people feel supported and then there's a space to like just grow with each other and help each other find opportunities. Um, and there should be more places like that for like, especially young people that don't have the resources like as far as money or just like, you know, creative space. I think, I uh, okay, yeah, go ahead, Destiny, go ahead. Oh no, I just want to say I second that. I felt that that was it right there. <laughs> yeah, I'm with both of them. Um, I think a creative space, an ideal creative space is one where everybody has a role, or at least in the very least, people feel important and welcome. Um, I, I wouldn't want to be on a set or anywhere else where I feel like everyone else was more important than I was, or, you know, it didn't matter whether or not I was there or the work that I was doing didn't have an effect on the overall project. Cause I think when people start to have mindsets like that, then people aren't working as hard and they're not having as much fun. So for me, outside of everything that uh, Jojo already said, I would say that just, you know, making sure that people know what they're supposed to be doing and feel like that is, resonating with them and like it's what they want to do and that's how they want to contribute so that you know everybody can feel like it's a team effort and not just you know Tarek's thing or Jojo's thing or Destiny's thing but it's like all of mm -hmm. our team. Thank you so much. Has have a positive circle, right? Um what are some future projects that you guys are working on or want to work on or some projects that you guys are working on? Um, I know for sure that I'm gonna work, I'll be working on, um, I started working on my album um, after, I think it was about 2020. And I have, I've taken a hiatus with writing and whatnot, but I know this year for sure, I wanna get back to just getting music out and working on an album because I haven't dropped an album since 2018. And I think it's time. It's about that time again. Um, so that's definitely something I will be working on and towards over the next year. 
in the meantime, I probably would drop some EPs and different, you know, singles and whatnot. And also, too, I really want to get back into creating more like passion projects because most of the projects I've been getting is like client work and it's fun it's dope I get to experience a lot of cool things and meet cool people but um I really do miss being creative like kind of my own will and just creating projects and just just really just taking it there with myself um and that's something I loved about SPNN and being a part of SPNN was being able to create you know, what you want to create based on, you know, what the episodes were about or whatever. I, I really missed that. Um, going back to the last question, I want to, I want like an adult version of Set It Up <laughs> for like me now as an older person and just being able to come into space and just get creative with people and have fun, have a good time, enjoy it and um, share space with people that are like-minded creatives. Um, but yeah, back back to the question that you just asked. I just I just lost it. What was the question again? <laughs> the question was, what are some future projects that you work okay. on or currently working yeah. on or want to, whatever? I got you. Yeah, so pretty much the album and then the EPs in the meantime. I'm going to work on some uh, personal projects for filmmaking and photography and um, being more creative with that. Um, and then... Um, I launched a new clothing line a few months ago. So in the springtime, I hope to drop the spring collection coming up pretty soon. Amazing. I'm so excited for that collection. Can't wait to see it. Um, <laughs> Justin, would you like to go? You look like you had something. Oh, yeah, oh, sure. I'll go. Um, yeah, so projects that I'm working on, I mentioned before, I've been working on for the past year, this documentary with Banana Leaf Collective. It's called Passion Project, which is funny. <clears throat> <laughs> but it's about like, yeah, it's about like uh, just like the struggle of young artists. Like the word artist is kind of thrown around a lot. And I think people have a lot of struggle with identifying as an artist or if you want to get in, there's different levels to being an artist. Like you can go into it for money, you can go into it for passion and you can just go into it just because you're interested, you know, just but just getting like that experience from others in the Northeast and then uh, just like how what they've gone through as far as exploitation and precarity in the community um, and just like kind of like uh, the art space in Northeast Minneapolis. And then uh, another thing I'm doing right now, I just started a YouTube channel just because I wanted like, you know, I was I was craving just like that playfulness of, of filmmaking that I used to have. And I feel like I've lost it over the past three years just because I've been trying to do so much for, you know, other people's projects, which is fine. Like I get inspired by that too. But I think I'm trying to lean into this being like, extremely selfish with my like creativity because that's what really fills me up like even me like putting it out makes me feel good it's weird like and if it gets like five views I'm like dang that's mine like I did that like that's for me like and so I think that gives me the energy to help other people because if I'm feeling like I'm not doing that then I'm like ah, I feel like I'm not doing enough for myself and like I get drained so I think just continuing to like put my YouTube channel like first and foremost and then like everybody else second like then I'm gonna like really feel like good about that but like yeah, and then just continuing to help like any like close friends that have like great ideas and just like, you know, continue to like provide like resources or uh, put my energy towards that. Uh, just finished a project with two of my friends, like Mark and T-Buzz, it's called RA. It's like this Nigerian dance film um, that took us like a minute to kind of finish off, but it's getting a lot of good positive reactions from others. We're gonna do a screening for it um, on March 17th at Public Functionary. So like that's something that I'm really proud of that ended up being a good project, you know, that I've been working on. So, yeah, I just trying to like continue to do kind of bigger scale projects, like kind of like Tarek touched on, like just like getting a team of people to like just tackle an idea and like seeing it through, like kind of like in a really precise way, like, you know, make shot lists, you know, we have a crew, everybody has their expertise in what they're doing and we can all just continue to like, you know, have a big project and like a, uh, and go for like a big picture rather than just like a, kind of not really planned projects. So I want to just like be more intentional with the work going forward. Amazing, have to check out the YouTube. Yeah, I'll, I'll plug it up, I'll, I'll put it in here later. And then um, I guess for me, man, this is the most motivated I've been as far as an artist and probably ever. I think that videos, filmmaking, all this different stuff, when I first started it out, wasn't feeling it. I was coming from playing basketball and it was just not something that I was 
super passionate about. I think it's partially just a mix of me not knowing what I was doing and also partially just the period of life that I was in. But now I feel like I kind of turned a new leaf and I'm super motivated. So I got a lot of stuff coming on the pipeline. I just put out a film that JoJo was actually in. So that was really cool. And I'll put it in the little uh, chat thing over there at the end of the show and everything like that. But outside of that, you know, I got a studio that I just um, started. So I'm trying to get funding behind that and hopefully get people in positions to create. And I'm hoping that by the end of the winter time, I can have some stuff laid out so that we can really get to the summer and take full advantage of it and pretty much just shoot 24 seven. So we'll see. Amazing, thank you. Going on to our last question and then we'll open it up to the guests for a Q and A. What, where do you see yourself in like five to 10 years from now? Yo, I'm gonna be a seven nice. figure maker, traveling the world, my baby girl, showing her uh, everywhere. Um, I see myself being a successful CEO of all three of my businesses, um, taking care of my family and um, giving back to artists who were in this position that just needed some help, needed a little push. I plan on like giving out grants and being a resource for people to help out with the business side of things. And all around, just I just wanna be as big as a blessing I can be. Like my, my biggest prayer, literally every day I pray, like God, please bless me so I can be a blessing to other people. So like my big thing is like, I want, it, I want all these things, but really it's just to give back and like put people on and just provide my baby girl a life that's just, just beautiful to live. It's uh, full of experiences and just traveling and um, doing what I love to do. I don't want to work a job. I want to just do what I love doing and um, yeah, just living my life to the, the highest capacity that I can. <laughs> uh, yeah, I would struggle with this question because I I can't really I can't really picture myself. Like I never, I always struggle with like seeing myself like two years in advance. Like I, I can't even think that far. So, but I think like what I would want to do is making sure I could just provide for my family. Like I just want to take care of my family, like hundred percent, like uh, just be somebody like they can lean on as far as that. And then I don't want to lose like my passion for creativity, which I don't think I ever will. Like it's just something that's in me. Like, I think you, you guys can attest to this, but you ever just feel like you always just have something in your mind. Like, it's just like, you always have this lingering like feeling you want to make something and you can't really help it it's just is what it is like and so luckily we've been able to like transmute it into actually putting stuff out because I know there's like millions of people that have these ideas in their head but they can't actually like put it out in a way it's in a form of creativity or in a form of whatever it is so I think that's like a, a blessing from God um that I'm able to like at least like articulate myself in a sense of like creation you know I've I found filmmaking like that's one thing I feel like it was an outlet but I could have done anything I could have you know made music I could have you know I could still do all that that's what I'm trying to say like I don't want to uh put myself in a box so whatever mm -hmm. I feel is like inspiring to me I want to pursue it and not be afraid um but yeah the, the main thing in the past in the next five seven years I just want to financially support my family that's my main goal so whatever happens with that whether whatever job I'm at hopefully it's something that aligns with something that I feel passionate about um, and continue to just keep my mind straight, I guess, and not really fall off. Yeah. I think for me, I'm pretty simple. I think uh, in the next five years, I would love to be alive and well, um, not sick, not about to die, nothing crazy happening. Um, I think if everything goes well and everything kind of is on the same trajectory as it is now, I'd love to be on my way to starting a family at some point. I think that's a beautiful thing that Destiny has her daughter and they're like able to share that together. That's really dope. And that's something that when I get there that I also would love to do as well. But outside of that, I think just from a career standpoint, I think as long as I'm somewhere that's warm, I don't have to see snow no more, and we can still 
do this whole directing thing and and still put some films together and make sure we get you know a taste of the black community wherever it is that I'm at I think that that's that's good enough for me so yeah thank you so much you guys those were awesome answers um we can open it up to the public for questions you can put them in chat or raise your hand whatever it works Wait, can I ask a question to the group? Can I do that? Is that a good Yeah, question? of course. Go ahead. Okay. I want to ask uh, the two of you guys, what is your favorite project that you've done within the last, let's say, year? Let's say that. Film? Like film-wise? Anything is cool. Anything-wise? Okay. Honestly, I'm gonna have to say that this documentary I'm working on right now is quickly becoming my favorite project that I've worked on in the last year, for sure. And you gotta answer the question too. I'm gonna answer it, don't worry. I'm gonna answer it, I know mine. That's what I'm gonna answer, because I know mine. I mean, why would you say that uh, the, the boxing documentary is, is your favorite? Um, because I got a chance to really like showcase my skills more so because I upgraded equipment. I got the Ace, uh, Sony A7S III for video and then A7R4 for photography. But um, I had, I've had a gimbal for four years. I just learned how to use it eight months ago. So, and I just learned how to shoot S-Log. So at the time I learned how to shoot S-Log, I learned how to use the gimbal. I learned how to shoot on the Sony A7S III and like this was just a playground for me to just showcase like all the new skills that I have been like learning and you know just trying to level up with with the production piece and um oh, oh I can say too I, I shot my brother's wedding in October of last year and that was definitely like the best wedding video I've ever done for sure and that's when I first got the, uh, the new camera set up. So I've been just geeking, just trying to use it. And like, I'm so ready. <laughs> like, I've been practicing like crazy. Like, <laughs> so like, I think that's really what it is. It's just like, you can really see the growth in this film. So I feel like that's why I'm, I really, really, really like it. All right, uh, my favorite project. Uh, there's been a lot in the past, like, I think like for me, like, I think like 2019 was like, like you said, you're in your back 2019. Like, that's how I felt too. I was like, yo, I'm really good. Like, yeah, I feel really inspired, but I made this film called The Overthinker. It's literally like one minute, but I like it so much because I feel like it's, it, there's no words in it, but it, it, it captures like how I was feeling at the time. Like it's in black and white and it kind of just represents like how you can just dig yourself in a hole of anxiety when you keep constantly thinking about you know all the things you got to do and just like what you think of yourself and i and like there's a scene in the in the in the film where i'm running and then the, sh the frame rates all like you know it's like very like sporadic and just like and there's this laughing in the back like this evil laughter and it kind of represents like you know my anxiety and my my fears catching up to me so and i think it was a really good way to visually represent it because like that's the first time i really felt like i could like put something out that I felt like I was communicating like through art. And I think that's like a really hard thing to do. So I, I'm very like proud of it. And I still like watch it sometimes I'm like, damn, that, that was pretty cool. Like, and it's rare for me to like do that. Cause like, you know, when you make something and then you're just like, ah, that's not that cool anymore. And that's a lot of the time I feel, but I can still look back on that and feel like, like it's, it has a special place like for me. So I want to just keep making stuff like that, that like is for myself and like makes me feel like I'm communicating how I'm feeling and other people can kind of relate to it. But yeah. That was a great question actually, but we have someone in the chat, I believe Catherine, she asks, what has surprised you the most about your own work after reflecting on it? Yeah, want me to go? Yeah. <laughs> uh okay 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 what has surprised me the most about my work after reflecting on it 
I think I'm always surprised when it turns out good. Uh, I want it to turn out good, but anytime I do so much production or like pre-production or organization on the back end, a lot of times as a filmmaker and as a director, I'm sure both of you know that you don't always get everything that you want. I feel like most of the time you don't get most of what you want. And so it's a matter of over planning, but also not stressing out day of and knowing like, hey, we might have to cut this, we might not be able to get it. But anytime I go to a shoot and I feel like I shot everything that I wanted to shoot and everything that I shot looks good. And when I come home and look at it on the computer, everything kind of goes the same flow, I'm surprised. And uh, I think that it's always a good feeling to know that, hey, you know, we took the time to put in the work and make everything look good. and now I can make something cool with it, you know? Um, <laughs> what surprised me the most after I do them wrong? Um, sometimes like with music, I like, when I'm in the mode of writing and I'm just in that zone and like I record myself, cause I record myself, I record all my music, then I send it to someone to mix and master it. So like I record myself and then I will hear it and I'm like, dang, I said that? Or, oh, wow. Like sometimes I don't even realize what I'm saying because I'm, I'm so in it that like when I like take some time and listen to it afterwards, I'll be like, oh, that was, that was okay, okay. I didn't even realize I was talking about that. Because sometimes you just be so in the moment with it. And I just, I just be surprising myself. I'd be like, dang, she got some bars low key. Like, y'all ain't catch that when y'all heard that. Like, I, sometimes I, I, I watch people react to when they listen to it. I'm like, oh, that went over their head. They ain't even, oh, that's so good. <laughs> but um, I really do surprise myself with like writing sometimes. Cause, and then you forget, like when you're an artist, you could transfer things. So like, I'm a good rapper and it's like, oh yeah. I'm a good writer and that could be applied to other, you know, aspects of writing as well. But um, I think I just be surprised by my own gifting sometimes, like the wittiness and different things. I'd be like, oh, dang, like, I didn't even realize I said that. Oh, I forgot I said that. Um, so with music, that's what surprised me is just the actual listening back and be like, oh, dang, like, I, I like where I'm going with this. And then I say for filmmaking, What's been surprising me lately is like, I'm finally like to get to a place where I can say I'm really proud of my work. So like the, the latest projects I've been doing, like after all the shooting and I actually sitting down and putting it together, just kind of similar to what Tarek was just saying, it's just like, wow, this is coming together. <laughs> and that can be very surprising because sometimes like when you, some projects I do wing, some projects I plan and whatever, but the winging projects, when those come together, you'd be like, wow, like that was nothing but God, because I don't know <laughs> how all the pieces just came so perfectly together. But yeah. Uh, looks like I got a question. Um, go ahead, yeah. Uh, so I think, hold on, let me read it again. Uh, wanting, wanting to create outside music and other narrative, uh, music videos on into narratives can you go further into detail on what that looks like i think for me like yeah i've always been wanting to make like a a film where like there's dialogue like i never make anything with like a, a like a, a plot and like characters speaking to each other it's always been a kind of a challenge because whenever i'm not the best writer and it's because i feel like sometimes the things i write are very cheesy like corny so that's why i need to like get like a writer to like kind of give me that input but i really want to like make like a feature where uh, I can get, you know, it to feel organic. And that's probably why I wanted to like start getting into acting because like I got to act in Tarek's like film and then I got to act in this other film with this great filmmaker named Oyinda. She's inspired by Issa Rae too. So you should check out her, her work. Um, but yeah, like just like getting away from music videos because I feel like for me, it got like repetitive because I guess music videos can tell a story, but it's, you have such little, I guess you could do a lot with music videos. But for me, I just felt like you can't really like, break down a character you can't really get into like their actual like personality and the things that they've gone through and just like you can see that on screen with two people reacting or you know just having that narrative kind of like dialogue so that's what I want to do more that's what I wanted to like branch into and I've been trying to like 
worked with I met LJ, uh, this kid named LJ. He's like 19 last year uh, at SPNN. I used to work with uh, at SPNN. I met him at uh, an event, and we started hanging out. And we just started making random shorts, like just out of nothing. Like literally, we had like a script, and we go back and forth, just improv, just. And I want to get, he's the one who gets me out of my head because I was like, oh, this has to look good. This has to look good. He's like, nah, man, let's just make something. Let's keep making something. I needed somebody to do that for me because if I don't have someone that just like wants to just make whatever, like I will just never make it. So he's been kind of pushing me to like have these sessions where we, he just comes over. We have like an idea and then we just like shoot and we have like three or four done, but it's just me and him acting. And so I want to like, just keep doing that until we strike gold and make something cool. We also have a question in the chat. Name one way you plan to increase representation or representation. Like representation as far as? Um, in yourself or as in your community, in people of color. Okay. I think, uh, I mean, just, one huge thing for representation is the fact that Jojo and I are able to share some time in like a corporate space. I think that now that I'm there and I see what it's like, I understand that a lot of times it's not always the most friendly to BIPOC people. And I think that the fact that I was able to get in there and kind of set that foundation and make those connections and then be able to say, hey, Jojo, there's another thing that's opening up over here if you want to take a stab at it and for him to be able to go through the process and kill it and actually get hired. I think that that's really cool too. And so a lot of times when we're at work, sometimes over the conversations that I'll have with him or he'll have with me or we'll have with another person when sometimes things can get really hard and frustrating and just reminding ourselves that we represent what can be for a lot of people who are younger than us like us and come from the same backgrounds. One more time, the question, just like, it's, I can't remember too well. The question was, name one way you plan to increase representation. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, a way that I could increase it is continue to show up for myself and like the people that look like me as far as just like not being afraid to step out of your lane because if you don't see people that look like you, that shouldn't discourage you in any way. Like you should stay confident because luckily I was raised in a way that my parents always made me feel that way because they're like, no matter where you are, you have to remember who you are. Don't let anybody make you feel like you're not supposed to be there. I think that even going back to just like being in high school, I would just like do like theater, you know, you wouldn't see like black people in theater. You wouldn't see black people in like jazz band or whatever. But I never had that feeling of like, I can't be here because of this. I was just like, I like it. So I'm going to do it. And I feel like, based off of that energy, I'm taking that into my life. And it's just a reflection of like the kind of thing I want every uh, black person to feel like they should never feel scared um, or intimidated by their environment. If anything, they should feel like they're bringing something to the table and a perspective um, that a lot of people probably don't have, you know, and the fact that they're able to uh, be in those positions, it, it takes a lot of, uh, you know, just like inner inner work as far as not feeling, not losing confidence in yourself. Because like like Tarek said, you could be in a corporate space and then you're not really, not that many people are young like you or black. So like, you might feel like you're not supposed to be there, right? So, and if you're going through that and you don't have people to lean on, it kind of gets to you a little bit. But if you stay grounded and make sure that you can tell yourself affirming things and you're there for a reason, then it makes things easier. And just making sure you lean on the people that build you up and don't feed into the energy um, that, you know, is not for you. So uh, I think me just showing up and being in spaces, continuing to work and uh, make things, you know, for the Black community um, and myself and tell stories for others, I think that's the best way to do it. Another question. I feel like they answer that very eloquently and it, nothing else needs to be added. <laughs> Another question in chat. If you guys all had magic wands and could make any dream come true, what would it be? Wow. I probably would have placements on 
literally just I could live off placements of my music. So I, I had a placement with Netflix for a show called Chambers. I signed a contract for Fenty Duty for one of my songs last year, but I don't know if they used it um, in any of their commercials yet. Um, and so like that is something I would love to get into is just placement. So like if I had a magic wand, I just would want all my music to be placed on different movies and ads and, and TV shows. And then um, for my clothing line would just be for it to be magic wand, everybody around the world is wearing my stuff and supporting and, and that kind of thing. And then my music, I just want to be heard worldwide and, and seen worldwide pretty much. It's a hard one. I got so many options that I could choose. I think my immediate thought was like, never pay for food again. That would be really <laughs> dope. Like if I could just eat whatever and not have to pay for nothing, I think that would be awesome. Um, but, you know, thinking about in regards to film, I think that if I had a magic wand and I could make one thing happen, I would want to make one film that like everybody saw and it was just a really big deal and even if that was just my one moment i'd be like cool that's it you know other than that i don't know that's all i got yeah so a magic wand just like is it just just for anything or just like creativity i guess um man i'd be like i like wave the wand and i could get like any kind of gear at the moment like, I just be like, all right, I need this camera because I saw, like, in the Spielberg movie, just boom, like, it's in my hands. Or, like, I get transported to a location that looks cool. Like, anything I'm inspired by, I could just be there. I guess, like, teleporting. And then just, like, yeah, just, I guess, like, providing resources, I guess, if I had the wand for, like, creativity only. Because there's so many things you could do with the magic wand. But, um, dang, what's my dream camera? The one that's in the studio at SPNN, um, the Canon um what was it called again i forgot uh but yeah the one that i that we got to use for uh speak minneapolis it was like a really fire camera it was a canon yeah it's speak it's speak um that's like my favorite camera i got to use for real like, i felt like i was like on some like superhero like vibes because like it was just it could just do so much with the sensor and like it, it it made it look like it was like a movie like you could shoot like so anything random it just like looked like a movie and those kind of cameras are expensive. They're like 11,000 or something like that. So just being able to have an opportunity to get to use that was just like crazy. C300, yeah, that's what it's called. But then also like an airy, like a film, like 35 millimeter, like all film or 16 millimeter camera would be cool to have. I'll definitely have to check out that camera at SPNN for sure, SPPS. Let's speak, let's speak. I will definitely, I'll check it out. Um, Destiny, this is a question for you. What's your plan for the clothing brand? Yeah, um, so I have a clothing brand for Desi Raw, which is like my merch for music. And then I have a separate clothing brand I just launched a couple months ago. That is called Raw Authentic, and that just stands for Raw and Authentic. And it's pretty much like a streetwear slash luxury brand. And my goal with that is pretty much the slogan is a rare breed. So my goal with that is really just to create really dope, unique pieces that you can wear that are staple pieces that stand out, you know, from the crowd. And it's really just a brand that embodies like individualism and just celebrating yourself and embracing who you are authentically, your raw self. Um, so Right now I have a soft lunch and I have a red sat a red satin jacket with a black satin hat um, that's out right now. And I just got some black satin jackets on hand as well. So I'm getting ready to do a photo shoot and promote that. But um, with this brand, I really wanted to kind of level up for my merch and just create really high quality cut and sew streetwear slash luxury uh, kind of clothing. And um, really is just to, um, I, I look at it as like like a, a uniform for people who are like fearlessly pursuing their dreams or fearlessly pursuing who they're called to be. And so this brand is just embodying that like go-getter mentality and um, just authentically being yourself, not conforming to society and standing out just by being yourself. You can be quiet and stand out. You don't have to be loud to stand out. 
So um, that's what I, that's what this brand pretty much embodies. And um, this is what I am working on a spring collection for as well. Now my merch clothing line is kind of more so general. I, um, I have done things in the past where I highlighted like black excellence and I had a, um, last year I had like uh, black business owners, sweaters and like different things that, you know, people could buy and support. And um, I love being black. Like, I was very pro black in my approach with my merch originally. And I also promoted my music. So I used the merch as a way to kind of make the music into fashion. And, um, and I, I'm getting ready to drop some sweatsuits with the merch. And that's how I look at it is like the merch, the Desi Raw line is like what you wear like during the day and then the Raw Authentic is what you wear at the show kind of thing. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of like the aesthetic behind each clothing line. And hopefully that answered the question. Yes, I can't wait to check that out. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, so I sent a question in. As an artist juggling so many things, how do you take care of your mental health? And that was kind of a collective question. Yep. You can go. All right, whoever wants to go. I'll go. Uh, I think in the past like two years, I've been really trying to be really good about it because like I started just journaling like the same thing every day but making sure I dedicate a specific time in my day to just do it and like silence my phone like no exceptions because like I feel like in order to, for me to do that it's going to help me in the future because if I don't do those things and take the time to just breathe through my day like just be present at least 10 minutes then it's like you feel like life's just collapsing on you and like if you don't have those like small moments to just like take a step back and like give gratitude and and then breathe and be present within yourself, then you're gonna get lost in the, the chaos. Cause like little things in life can throw you off. Like, you know, you could just have a bad day and then things stack up and then something happens to you. And then, but you have to build up your mind to just be more uh, tenacious about just being able to ground yourself within. And I wasn't really intentional about it until the past two years. Cause life just keeps, keeps getting crazier with like work and just like, um, the stresses of things that are external that you can't control so I'm just trying to like make sure I can do that for me and like uh yeah meditation and journaling is like the main two things I really like have gotten into and then trying to read more but that's always really hard for me too so yeah I think um one of the biggest things for mental health as far as like how it relates to art for me is I gotta know when it's not time to do art like when it's time to just chill you know and hang with my dad or watch tv or play the game with my friends or something like that or go outside for a walk or just experience things I think that working in my job I have to be really smart about like when it's the right time to pull out the camera or when it's the wrong time like sometimes you just want to be in the room with people and you want to soak up their energy have those conversations make things feel like they're natural so that when in a different moment it's time to actually pull out the camera and it's time to record something or capture a moment that you can have more of a genuine um moment on camera I think and I had to do the same thing in my personal work and sometimes when I come home and it's like ah, I gotta go get this done or I gotta do this or I gotta do that got to put this shot list together I got to uh, work on this video that I've been slacking on or whatever but sometimes I notice that when I'm pushing myself too far my mind is not fresh the work is not what it should be and me or the client neither of us are happy so I think that it's just important for me to know how to separate when it's time to do something creative and that it's okay to take a time to do things that maybe just are normal and chill you know 100%. I'd say for me, that's something I really struggle in, especially being a mom right now with a one year old. Um, it's been a challenge, definitely. Um, and that's something I plan on intentionally trying to figure out how I can do better with. Um, lately, I've been trying to figure out who I am outside of an artist, outside of a filmmaker. Because I, all I know is art, all I know is music. I've grown up doing these things and it's become a part of me, like it's embedded. Like I don't even know how to separate it, but I know that 
there is a separation that needs to occur, just like Tara was talking about. But um, I'm learning, like, last week even, one of my friends had a show at the Dakota Jazz Club. And I was like, you know what? I haven't been out in almost two years. I'm going to call a friend and go to the show. And that was the first time in two years that I got out the house and actually did something that wasn't with my boyfriend slash the father of my child and just was a good time with a friend. And that felt really good that night. And I'm like, you know what? I can do this more often. So I think I'm discovering what those things mean to me. Um, and I'm, I'm discovering what brings me joy outside of creating because creating has brought me so much joy that I, I did nothing but do that for so long up to, I pretty much was forced guys. I got pregnant. Like if I didn't get pregnant, like I would still be out here going running crazy, but like I had to stop. I didn't have a choice. Like it was nothing but like, God, like, no, stop. Like you, you have to sit down this. And so I am discovering, you know, just who I am outside of being an artist and a creator. And I am discovering like what, what that looks like for me with like self-care and um, just taking time for my mental health because I know that's important and I do plan to be more intentional about that and so just learning myself and learning like oh that was fun going to show with a friend like I could do stuff like that or like figuring out what are other things I, I enjoy doing I just have to discover keep discovering what that is for me. Yeah, mental health matters. It it flicks on your work and your attitude and the people around you. So it definitely does matter. Um, one question we have in the chat is one, how in your stories addressing stereotypes of the black community? So how are you in your stories addressing these stereotypes? just you know, hand it on to you okay yeah i think for me like a lot of the time like i think when people think of a black filmmaker they have to like make something that's traumatic or whatever or like they got to talk about you know slavery or just like the things that we want to move past i mean obviously it's rooted in our history and we need to acknowledge uh, obviously but i think there needs to be more space for someone to just make art and then but the fact that they are making art that's representing them as a black person and showing young people and other people that you don't need to live within your trauma. You can, you can enjoy life and find joy in that as a black filmmaker. And I think there needs to be more of a path uh, for people to look at in that sense, um, which I think it is changing. Like there's the, a lot of new, gen the new generation, people like Issa Rae or like, you know, other people have been creating stories just like, just to make stories like, about like love and just like experiences you know that people are going through just like within themselves not necessarily like having to touch on a lot of trauma but I think like uh that's like the biggest thing um that I take away from that but I always forget the question when I keep talking man that's crazy me like, too yeah <laughs> I was like what like, I'm what? like oh man am I on the right track yeah still? that's what I'm like okay people that do these interviews all the time are just like nah, they have skills like because now I'm realizing it's actually kind of tough, especially if like the spot. Yeah. I can repeat the question. Um, how in your stories addressing the stereotypes of the black community? How are you in your stories addressing the stereotypes? Yeah, I, I think just the stereotypes are just like not not uh telling the same story that people expect. Like, you know, you look at uh certain narratives of, of black people and they're always like the funny person, the loud person, uh angry person but they never like looked at as the person first you know what I mean it's I guess at least in the past couple of, like decades and centuries of mainstream media there's just an idea of what black people are supposed to be like um and so what, what I was trying to touch on is just like yes create films and create art for black people obviously you know as a black filmmaker that's what you can you're just going to do that like because you, you are looked at as a black filmmaker no matter what but I think like just not limiting, limiting yourself within those stories. You can create characters that have different perspectives and they come from different places. Like, you know, start writing black characters that do like pottery or just like, you know, things that people don't expect, I guess, but just don't be in a box within um, the stereotype. That's, that's what I would say. Yeah. I'd say going off of um, what Jojo said, 
I think that as long as you're creating three dimensional characters, then you won't run into too many stereotypes. I feel like obviously there are certain stereotypes that some black people carry and then there are certain stereotypes that other black people don't carry. Um, but I think that when I think about putting together characters, I think about, you know, how can I make this a real person? Like, how can I make them well-rounded? How can I put um, characteristics in them that are very true to somebody maybe that I know or somebody that I could know? And I think that when you do that, it makes the character feel a lot more authentic and believable, you know, whether or not they have characteristics about them that are typical or characteristics about them that maybe are a little bit um, different. But I think as long as you're just making them feel like they're real people and you're able to communicate that on screen, and that is kind of going back to that even representation question that we had earlier that makes Black people more well-rounded because they can see different types of Black people, different ways of communicating, different ways of speaking. And I think that um, that's the most important thing for me personally, like as I do my approach to film. Um, I love that. Um, I think for me, because I, I haven't gotten back into like creating my own kind of work where I am in control of the characters and whatnot. Um, when I do a lot of my client work, personally, I love photographing Black men and I love like highlighting Black boy joy. Like I just love capturing like the smiles and the, the pure joy that like Black boys and Black men have. And I feel like, you know, we're always portrayed or a lot of the times we're portrayed as angry or aggressive and different things like that. So like a lot of my photography, when I do work with Black men, like especially I try to like bring out the joy and like showcase that. And um, I can speak on the music aspect. I feel like um, when, when you think about like female rappers these days, I feel like most people will automatically think like about, you know, like, I don't know how PG we need to be on this thing, but you know, we got the Meg Thee Stallions, we got the Cardi B's and, you know, like uh, Nicki Minaj and whatnot. And that can be a stereotype itself, like black women rappers equals this, you know? And I feel like with my music, like, I am nowhere near that in, in what I talk about. And I have so much substance in, um, in, in my music and I have so much intentionality behind it. Um, a lot of people are surprised when they listen to me. And um, I feel like that alone, I really hold dear to that because I believe representation matters even for different kinds of black girls and black women. And so for me, like I'm a very natural person and and you know, like I'm a I'm a business owner, like I'm a mom now. So like I represent certain things in my music that a lot of the you know mainstream female rappers don't represent. So um, and I feel like because of that, like I create different narratives with with women in hip hop and and um, speaking my truth from my experiences. So that's how um, you know, I kind of look at myself as breaking those stereotypes when it comes to what you think about when you hear a woman rapper in today's society. Great, thank you so much for that. Um, we have one more question and then I'll get on, we'll get on to you guys sharing your website, screen sharing. I know Justin was a little nervous about that, but um, the last question of the night, how do you maintain your balance in your operation? Um, so I, okay, I'm just reading through the whole thing. What was your biggest fear you had to conquer to break through to get to the place you are now? And what would you tell someone who had low self-esteem to help them move forward? So, um, like I mentioned before, 2019, I was in my bag. 2020 came, my life changed. I actually went through postpartum depression after I had my daughter and I was in a very dark place, dark place I've never been before in my life. And it was really hard to get out of that place. And um, when, as I started getting out of that place, by the grace of God, I, I then began to face 
myself and I realized like I'm scared I have a fear to get back out there like like I used to be I had a fear of like rejection I had a fear of what if people don't mess with me like how they did when I was pop popping you know like I had a fear like I, I wouldn't be received well again and I had a fear I just wouldn't even be at the same place or, or grow or be better and a lot of that was just me overthinking and doubts coming in my head. And to me, like what got me out of that place was I had to really get tight with my faith and God and know like, personally, I'm a very spiritual person. And that that's what helped me out is that relationship what I had with God and realizing like, I am, I am a masterpiece. You know, I am who God says I am. And all these things that are coming in my head is nothing but the enemy trying to distract me and trying to take me away. Because when you have a big purpose, trust me, he gonna, he gonna come extra hard for you because you can really make an impact. And so for me, honestly, it was nothing but like remembering my faith and, and I had to fight back. So when I had those negative thoughts, I would fight it by declaring a declaring out loud, like, no, I am not, I'm not gonna fail. Like I'm I'm a win. Like, you know, I had to fight those thoughts until I got to a point where I finally knocked it out I could stand up again and um and so like I understand like <laughs> that low self-esteem thing is real because I had that I just came out of that recently like in the in the last few months and I and I came from not dealing with that to facing that to getting out of it and overcoming those thoughts and those fears and um just know that like you're whoever said this like you're really dope like you are meant for this life like you're meant you're, you have so much purpose and like you have to remember that in times when like like your brain wants to make you feel like you're inadequate or small it's like no you're not you're that deal for real like remember that like there's only one of you like that's the beauty of life it's like we all have an assignment and like we just got to get to it because that's what that's what we're meant to do. It's, it's all a part of our destiny. It's normal to feel low self esteem, but you just gotta fight that with, like, declaring those positive things out loud and not allowing that to, to like just take you and swoop you in and keep you, you know, for a long period of time. Justin, would you like to go? Yeah, I'll, I'll go um yeah fear I guess um I don't really yeah I have everybody, everybody has their like doubts and within um themselves I think my my main thing was just not trying to like let my parents down because like you know just as far as just like making sure I could provide for myself and make sure I'm good because I remember I don't know for me I, I kind of was like a light developer and as far as like thinking in the future that's what I struggled with so even in high school I wasn't like the best student i I remember when it came down to the wire, like I wasn't getting accepted to any schools and stuff. My parents were like on, on me the whole summer, just like, or the whole like year, just like, what are you going to do with your life? What are you going to do with your life? And I was just like, yo, I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to figure it out. And then it hit the fan. And then I was like, all right, it's time to lock in. So I, I, I definitely like felt that fear because I was like, wait, things are starting to like crash down. And I have to like, I realized all the things at stake, all the people that I have in mind that I'm going to let down. I think that's the thing that put, helps me push through is like whenever I have like a lot of doubt, I start to think of like, who do I want to make proud or who's going to look at me and expect me to be somebody like, and that's what really pushes me to like get up because like a lot of the times you could go through life and not really think of that, but the people that have sacrificed so much for you to, you know, be where you're at. And so I think going forward, like anytime I have extreme doubt, I also think it's a good thing to like be scared oh with the things you're doing because it gives you an opportunity to like rise above it kind of like what destiny said i remember like when i got hired from the wolves like they had me make these like pre-anthem videos and i thought that was like the scariest thing because i was like i've never done that before and they're gonna play it on like the big screen and everybody's gonna watch it and i was like they're gonna like you know but i think like just me knowing like oh i i'm here for a reason like they got me for a reason like i can do this and so like the more you do it um the more you kind of like push through that fear and, and imposter syndrome because you're starting to like I guess like become who you know you're supposed to be in a sense of like you, you can't you can't keep thinking about the doubt because you know where you want to be so it's like 
at the end of the day, you just got to like step over it and just like deal with it. And it's, it takes a lot, but I obviously still struggle with that a lot. But I think if you have a good support system and you, you put things to perspective as far as like thinking about the people around you and your loved ones, then it helps get through it more. Yeah. And then um, for me, I would say, I think just fear, like, what is the biggest fear? I would say the biggest fear that I've had to conquer is one that is not conquered yet and will be conquered eventually. And I think that it's something that is more centered around acceptance rather than it's something that I'm scared about. And I think eventually I'll get there. And as far as advice or um, what I would tell someone who has low self-esteem is I would say that as long as you're moving forward, you're good. You know what I mean? I think it's when you get stuck or when you feel like you're not moving at all, that's when things can get to a really scary place, um, going back to the mental health thing. So I think as long as you are moving forward and you're trying to just take one day at a time, take one step at a time, take one photo at a time, make one song at a time, then you're good. Thank you so much, you guys. Those are wonderful answers. I'm sure we learned a lot, all of us. I know I did. And I thank you guys for um, giving us your time to share your creativity and everything. But with that, I will pass it on to mine. All right. So Thanks, Heaven. And thank you, Heaven, for being an amazing host. Um, thank you all for a wonderful conversation and thank you to our guests who attended this panel. Um, I think I've linked all of the stuff in the chat. If anybody needs something, please feel free to email me. I'll send over the links again. Um, but other than that, I think we can wrap it up for tonight. Wonderful conversation. It's been really productive. Thank you, everybody. Um, and with that, we can just close out. All right. Have a good night, thank everyone. You. Thank you so much. See you later. Our artists,